Well, now South Africa has uh, um, made great uh, strides in uh, promoting women participation in the economy, uh, but there are still gaps that need to be addressed. Uh, the South Africa Gender Assessment Report, which was released by the World Bank and the uh, Women, Youth and uh, People with the Disabilities Ministry, shows that uh, uh, critical gaps around how levels of uh, labour force participation and wage gaps uh, uh, now, the report also highlights uh, barriers to women's control of land and other productive assets. Well, for more on this, we're now joined uh, via Zoom by Marie-Francoise Marie Nelly, who's a World Bank Country Director uh, for South Africa, Botswana, Namibia, Lesotho and uh, Eswatini. Thanks so much indeed for joining us. So uh, welcome to the programme. Thank you very much, and greeting from Babali. <laughs> so um, tell us, how important is it to, to gauge uh, issues such as this, uh, 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 particularly around uh, women and gender issues? Uh, Peter, it's absolutely essential. In fact, uh, what we are saying for South Africa and from the continent as a whole is that uh, looking at uh, gender parity gender, women, economic empowerment is essential uh, to really make stride in development on the continent. And we also say that, you know, it is smart economic. So it's absolutely, absolutely important. And this is why we are pleased to have this report, because we say that you cannot develop an economy in really ignoring half of the population. Or if I take the image of a plane, you cannot have a plane world going for a long time on only one engine. So this is why we feel that uh, this is a timely report and it should be at the center of uh, our thinking, our activities. And we at the World Bank, we actually have put that as a critical element to reduce extreme poverty and improve opportunities and share prosperity in our countries. All right, so what did you find in the main? And one suspects, I guess, that a lot of familiar territory and trends that have continued over time. Uh, yes, so first of all, uh, as you said in the introduction, the good news is that uh, South Africa is uh, among the top 10 countries in the world that have made significant stride and reforms in facilitating gender parity, uh, women, uh, women legal rights, and participation more broadly. So that, that is, if you want, the good news of the report. But um, the, the not so good news is that uh, there are still gaps, as you have mentioned. So if I am trying to be a bit more specific in terms of the positive element, South Africa has a legal framework, legis legislative framework that is comparable with most of the advanced countries. And as I said to you, uh, it's considered among the top 10. Uh, but the challenge is, of course, uh, implementation. Uh, we have looked at the report, and the assessment uh, was done under three dimensions, looking at human endowments, economic uh, opportunities, and the third one is voice and agency, the capacity of women to actually participate in society. So on the first one of human endowment, in fact, uh, South Africa has done pretty well. Uh, uh, the country has already achieved uh, parity in education at primary, secondary level. And in fact, when you go to uh, tertiary education, you find that there are more women uh, in all than men. So that is quite uh, encouraging. Now, uh, the challenge, of course, is that um, when uh, you look at outcome, uh, you have uh, less women that succeed in math and science, which is really critical in, in order to access, you know, skills, jobs. So that is uh, on human endowment. Now, where uh, the challenges and the uh, persist more importantly is on around economic opportunities and voices and agency. And here I would like to provide, you know, some uh, figures. Uh, as I just said, uh, you have made significant progress in uh, reducing gender gaps in education. But what we see is that this has not been translated into more jobs for women uh, than men and in activities. And if I, I give you the uh, labor force participation, which essentially measures you know, how many active uh, people in working age are active on the labor market, the average for the country 
is about 57%. But when we look at women, it's only 51%, again, 63% for men. So that is the first element, lower labor participation for women. The so second is that when they are in activities, we see that more women are engaged in low skilled jobs. And even when they are engaged in better jobs, at equivalent level, you see that women uh, get lower wages in the range of 25 to 35%. So that is also another challenge. And finally, looking at the economic uh, opportunities, we see that women, and, and you alluded as well uh, in your introduction, have less access uh, to financial assets, less as access to land, and particularly for customary laws in that regard, and um, really being engaged more broadly in activities. Now, moving to the participation in the uh, political life, voice and agencies, as we said, that I must start by the good news, which is that uh, South Africa is quite well placed because you have now reached a parity in the executive, in the in the cabinet uh, uh, now. And if we look at parliament, it's a little bit lower. It's around 46%. And in fact, uh, South Africa is rated uh, uh, among the top, top 12 countries, so 18, 12, uh, in terms of women representation in parliament. So that is a good news. But when you go at the local level, provincial and local level, you have less participation of women. Although I should say, looking at the most recent uh, local elections, uh, I understand that for the metros, you have three metros that are uh, led by uh, female mayors, uh, Johannesburg, um, Nelson Mandela Bay, and uh, Ekurikuleni. Um, so that is, that is good in terms of numbers. But when we go deeper, we actually see that uh, their participation, their active participation, it's a little bit lower. So more needs to be done to empower them and provide them you know, with uh, the capacity to engage and move further, which leads me to my last point, which is that we see that across these three dimensions, we see that the social norms affect gender equality. It takes time to uh, get out of the idea that women should be in specific activities, men should be in specific, specific activities. And through our surveys, we actually found that uh, most people think that it is normal for the man to be the breadwinner of uh, the family. So it really requires changing these uh, patriar patriarchal norms that still prevails. And the other element that I would like to uh, signal is the fact that uh, progress in reducing gender inequality is also affected by the legacy of apartheid that mm. you have. Because clearly, uh, although, of course, uh, uh, access uh, to services sometimes is not related to, to, to gender, uh, it's related to location, but you can find that, you know, broadly speaking, black women have less access to services yeah. and that perpetuates this uh, uh, differential that uh, I mentioned earlier. Yeah? All right, perhaps as we start to wrap up, You've given a really good overview of the lay of the land and some of the reasons uh, mm -hmm. why. What can we do about it? How do we improve these figures uh, more quickly? So uh, I think that what we agreed is that it has to be uh, uh, an effort of everybody. So we need to declare the, the urgency of the matter because as I said, this is important to contribute to growth and equitable uh, growth and inclusive growth. So in terms of access to um, economic opportunities, uh, we think that we noted that uh, because of the social norms, uh, women need to be uh, supported and have better access to uh, child care services so that indeed they don't stay at home, but they can go actually to work and benefit and use their potential. Secondly, and I think that the government is doing quite a lot, is in terms of access to financial services, financial inclusion, there is a need to do more and also facilitate uh, access to women to entrepreneurship because there are very fewer women that are uh, owner of enter enterprises. Government has, for example, put a provision to allow uh, female enterprises to access to public procurement, to, but that needs to be enforced. So clearly more enforcement, implementation, of the rules that are there, provided opportunities to the women and have a deliberate effort to make sure that everything being equals, you give opportunity to women to participate more actively because it is smart economics 
and the more women will be in activity, it will generate more revenues for the economy. But more importantly, we know that women play a key role in the household, in the society as a whole. And I think that it will bring more innovation and diversity. Marie Francoise, Marie Nelly, thank you very, very much indeed for joining us uh, and giving us uh, wonderful insights about uh, things that we should place higher on our agendas. And let's hope that uh, those that can affect change will do and do it urgently. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Pleasure.